Um, I appreciate it. So uh, today we have Michael Parks Miranda, class of 2004, right? 2005. 2005. I said 2004. 2005, it's been a while. So yeah. 15 years out, uh, I've known him for a real long time. He's a great guy, someone I count as a friend. And um, so what have you been up to? How's things going? Uh, you're in uh, L.A. today? In L.A., yep. Uh, things are, you know, as tricky as, you know, for everybody right now. But we're um, things are good. You know, we, we've been lucky enough that we've had nice weather for the past couple months, you know, pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and still trying to kind of get some projects off the ground despite, you know, production being shut down. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had to kind of get creative in ways that we can create things from home. Um, you know, directing remotely is something that I've never done before. Um, and I'm directing this music video right now for this band called Delta Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we had, back in March before everything shut down, we had this creative that we we're gonna film in Las Vegas, um, sort of this character study, sort of documentary style music video with all of these you know, different walks of life, both you know, in downtown Vegas and in the suburbs as well. And we, the band Delta Spirit was gonna be on tour in Los Angeles and we were gonna kind of do some pickup shots with them. So when everything got canceled, we had to really go back to the drawing board and figure out, you know, how can we still create things in sort of the pandemic era, um, which is tricky when you have to consider, you know, we can't travel. Um, all the band members are, of course, in five different states throughout the country. So that was a huge issue um, just in itself. And so we, some friends and I started to sort of formulate the idea of, creating a character study all around the country right now and basically partnering with about there's 31 cinematographers who I'm directing pretty much simultaneously uh, around the country. And they're all kind of, you know, it's like kind of slice of life portrait around, you know, quarantine, but also, you know, kind of exploring how those who they're quarantined with sort of, um, you know, are still able to operate and, and still practice their, practice creatively or still be able to you know have um, an, an emotional outlet whether that's you know a dancer who's used to being in studios and can't you know get out how does she express herself at home um to like even there's a there's a doctor who it, uh, one of the cinematographer's fathers is a doctor sort of on the front lines of, of the pandemic but he comes home at night and he is a beekeeper and so it's kind of like his footage with like you know 50,000 bees. So it's just really this, it's this really cool mosaic of all these different people. Um, and I think it's a really, in a lot of ways, it's like a proof of concept for how we can still produce going forward in a safe manner, where it's like, you know, kind of small little micro teams going out to shoot something safely um, and just kind of compile it together into one cohesive video. That's cool. That's really cool. So uh, that's uh, that's the project you're working on now. So let me step back just a little bit, just the kids kind of know a little bit more about. It. So, 2005 DS. So how did you get interested in like the idea of film and video? Yeah, I didn't. You know, I, I grew up making short film, like short films. And by short films, I mean like sleepovers at friends' houses, making like a horror film knockoff type of thing. You know, I wasn't really like a. I, I never. I didn't really think. I didn't have like a huge passion or ever think I was gonna go into, you know, the film world. Mm -hmm. um, and when, I think it was around sometime in, I think my senior project was actually a really terrible music video that you were my, um, <laughs> it, it was with John that. Lee, I remember. Yeah, it was oh, atrocious. Yeah. yeah, yes, I do remember yeah, that. The hip hop video that came out uh, terribly, <laughs> yeah. but it was exciting. I think that that was sort of like, it started to put the, you know, the idea in my head that I enjoyed. Uh, you know, creating. I knew that I wanted to do something creative, whether it was, you know, graphic design or, you know, I, I didn't really know. I think like a lot of people, a lot of kids in high school, you're still kind of figuring out what you're, what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. But um, there's another Dover Sherburn graduate named Chad Ermston, who's, I don't know if you guys know, Dispatch and State Radio. Um, they're good friends of mine. And so when I was in college, I started to just kind of, I had like kind of a junkie camcorder and I would film their live shows. And I started to, you know, put edits together for the band for fun. Um, and I even got some college credit to go on tour and shoot some, you know, live videos. And I was really into that. And I really got sort of like the bug for, for music video directing. I've always been a huge music person, huge fan of a lot of different, you know, genres of music. And so I started, you know, kind of hit the ground running trying to partner with as many bands and labels as possible uh, to create music videos. And 
I'm 32 now and I'm still doing it. So awesome. it's, yeah, it's fun. Very good stuff. So you just did your first feature film. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? Like, how is it like to take something from like, you know, short, you also do commercials as well, which we do in this class. So how right. do you take the idea of like doing like small videos and then kind of like, it's a, that's a huge leap from. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. Kind of, kind of larger scale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, uh, so this film is called Best Summer Ever. It's my first uh, feature directorial debut. And it's a eight song original musical that some friends and I wrote. And my background is in disability. So my parents have run a day program originally out of Sherburn, uh, since moved to Millis. That's a day program for folks with a uh, variety of, of special needs. And I've always tried to to include disabled talent in my work, um, mainly just like my disabled friends who, you know, I hang out with, you know, just for fun and because they're good buddies and always tried to, you know, kind of just bring, you know, when you're creating on a smaller scale, you lean, I'm sure you guys know this, you lean on your friends, right? You know, if you need someone to be an extra, you might bring in your brother or your cousin or your best friend. They may not be actors, but, you know, you just need someone to be in it. And so a lot of the time that was, you know, how I would function is like, I mean, if you go through my music videos, you'd see my mom or my brother-in-law, they're in many of them, you know, just because it's fun to work with your friends and family. Um, and so bringing in some disabled friends was really just like, you know, I wanted to make it, I wanted there to be representation. We then started making some short films and started to realize that there was this huge disparity in the entertainment industry um, of disabled actors just really not having a seat at the table. And so we wrote this film to basically, you know, give a boost to a lot of the disabled talent out there that's not being represented. Um, and so, yeah, we, we shot for about 45 days up in, Ver in Vermont. Uh, it was really challenging. You know, I'd never, I'd never worked at something in that scale. You know, a lot of, a lot of times if it's a commercial or music video, it's just, you know, a couple weeks of prep and then a couple day shoot. And this was like months of writing and pre-production and then, you know, about 45 days of filming. And then we edited for about two years, maybe, maybe even a bit more than that. Um, and the film, I don't know if you guys know South by Southwest, but the film was supposed to premiere at South by Southwest, which is a festival in Austin, but unfortunately it got canceled because of coronavirus. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's a, it is a huge leap to go from small scale to, you know, to a feature, but I think over years, you, you sort of, you know, learn your best practices and be able to get to a point where you feel like you could, you know, bite off a project of that scale. Uh, and it's really just, you know, continuing to make smaller scale stuff that gets where the production value gets bigger and bigger. And at some point you just have to take the leap, which we yeah. do. That's awesome. Uh, so we do in this class here is we kind of like scaffold the ideas. We start small. If we were still in the studio, they'd be working on bigger projects. So um, like you said, like best practices. So for like pre-production, what do you, what are some of your practices we do? So right now the kids are writing a treatment for a, um, like a Netflix type of program that they've been working on for like last month. Yeah. So what, what do you do for like pre-production and how do your ideas come out? Yeah, so I, I think generally, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll kind of stick to a like kind of music video because that's, you know, something that's fresh in my mind. Um, I think generally it's coming up with an approach or let's say it's a short film. I think a lot of ways, you know, I usually start with the initial idea and really start to just sort of formulate the idea in my mind of, of you know, what's the, what's the tone of it? Um, what are some films that I think, you know, are an inspiration for me that I, I'm sort of seeing this imagery. Um, and there's this great website that you guys should check out called Shot Deck. And what Shot Deck is, is this, a cinematographer basically took all of these screen grabs from like every film ever made and they're all super high quality. So let's say that you're like, okay, I wanna come into Sweeney's class and, and this is the idea I have. It is a Western and it's you know following a young girl and her dog as they travel through the desert or something like that. You can go into shot deck and if there's movies you're, that you know, come to mind, you can type those in and all these great images will come up. Or you could type in like Western or dog and kind of build out uh, this treatment and it's all these visuals. And I think that's a really great way to, you know, approach other people to get involved in it. You're, you know, because it starts with you, right? 
And so if you're like, well, here's here, rather than, you know, oftentimes it's, it's people are visual learners, right? So I can explain a project to someone in person and to all of you, and you all might get a very different idea of what I'm trying to convey. Imagery, I think, is a really great way to show people, you know, what the look is that you're going for, the environments, and so sort of building out a deck, and it might be something you just drag the images into a Google Doc or something like that. Um, I think that's a really great way uh, as a jumping off point to, you know, to sort of put your ideas down. Sure, writing and scripting, all, all that's really important as well, but I think having imagery to sort of you know, kind of create a mural of all of these different ideas is a great starting point. And I think it can, and of course, like we all, you know, we're, we're all inspired by some of, you know, our favorite films. And I think digging into the imagery of films that you'd like to kind of reference is a great way. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I agree with what you're saying there with the idea of uh, imagery and also, you know, it all kind of starts with written word, but you have to figure out how you're going to get those ideas and kind of make it a visual part of what we're gonna be doing, which is kind of hard for what we're doing now because we're kind of like stuck in the writing process and totally. the realization doesn't really come out as much as possible, but uh, maybe you guys can try that shot deck, see if you come yeah, out. Check it out, I think um, it's a great resource. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out after this actually. Does anyone have any questions as we kind of go through here? I'm kind of like, kind of going through mine. Do you guys have any, any questions so far? You do, you just you can just yell them out. If not, I'll just keep going. Yeah. All right, good seeing everyone here. This is good, good. Uh, Good, good showing. So, um, how about collaboration? So, you you do a lot of you said a lot of collaborations. Um, so, how how's it like work with your crew and your producers? Like, you're like what's yeah. the give and take when you work totally? With um, you know, I tend to. What's what's great about um, I love collaborating. You know, I, I sort of have a go to cinematographer uh, that I work with quite a lot. Um, but what, you know, for this project, I'm working with 32 different shooters, some of which I've never met before. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, I'll, let's say that I have that initial deck that I've created. I'll generally send that to producers or to DPs, so that cinematographers that I want to work with, um, and start to kind of formulate, you know, uh, you know, basically getting those visuals down is a, is a good starting point. But then, you know, giving it to someone like a cinematographer who's going to actually film it and make it come to life, that's when you start to kind of formulate the, you know, what's the look of it? How does camera move? Um, you know, is it, are we, are, is it long takes? Are we doing, is it very like, you know, um, a lot of like sh snappier cuts? There's a lot of different, you know, that's when things start to formulate into like, you know, the vision, the vision of actually like the cinematography of it mm -hmm. comes into play. Um, and generally that's when we will talk to a producer and of like how we can, you know, make this happen. You know, they're, they handle a lot of the logistics um, and budget, which is really important. You know, I think if it's, if it were up to the director and the cinematographer, we would get as much gear as possible and make it as big as possible. And a producer usually comes in to rein, rein us in and say, well, maybe if you want to get that huge, you know, maybe if you want that like big jib shot, we can't afford to do this underwater filming that you want to do and so that generally you know they're they're kind of the buzz kill at times but they're they're crucial to the process yeah it's uh it's the um i, I was on both sides of that i worked as a producer for a while and then i also worked in the without you know not working, working with producers and it's tough to say no sometimes but you see what the bottom line is coming in you're like yeah yeah you know, oh, totally yeah. and you know for there's certainly been projects that I produce as well as direct and more often than not where we've gone over budget because I'm juggling too much and biting off more than I can chew. So it's good to have a producer to bring you in. That's cool. Sorry, I got my daughter like, I got like, day, I got daycare and you guys go. Yeah. They're, so they're used to it. I'm listening, but they're used yeah, to it. Yeah, no, of course. Good. No worries. So um, how important is social media to your work? Like your website's, it's killer. Like it's, it's so fun. To, you, know, you go on there and it's like basically tells you what you're looking for. It's easy to um, go through. You, as I said in the beginning here, you're doing commercial work. You're doing short form music videos. You got your long term, a long, longer uh, pieces on there, and um, it all meshes really, really well. So how important is that to kind of like because we're talking about the creative part of this, but it's also 
this is your business, this is your world. Yeah. Like, right. So, you know, how important is that to get the word out there to people through those media? Yeah, it's really important. You know, I think that there's a lot of great, talented people out there. Um, and I think that the most, like, buttoned up version of your work that's that comes across in a creative uh, you know just platform where everything's you know outlined in a in a cohesive way that people can sort of see your best work um, is really important you know in order mainly for you know other for agencies or other you know labels who are looking for directors to be able to see okay well this is what you know, find a website and has everything that, you know, really plays to all of your strengths is really important. And the social media, you know, I think it's easy to get, you know, kind of bogged down on Instagram and Facebook and all that, just so much information coming to you. But I think that Instagram in particular for a filmmaker is really important because it's a great network. And I think that's where I'm discovering a lot of great directors and producers and cinematographers. And there's a, there's a cool kind of camaraderie on Instagram um, where a lot of you know, everyone's just sort of supporting each other's work and commenting when new work comes out. It's a great way to you kind of get into, you know, the sort of, you know, not saying getting into the industry necessarily, but if there are directors that you love, like follow their work and comment and, you know, engage with them. I know that what was crucial for me when I was coming up was like just blind reach out to other, you know, much bigger directors uh, and cinematographers and, and just wanting to like get advice or, you know, I get reached out to quite a bit and I'm happy to hop, hop on a call, whether it's someone on LinkedIn or Instagram. And I've met, you know, I have brought on quite a few PAs and um, even some cinematographers from just them reaching out being like, I like your work. I'd love to collaborate if a project arises. And so I think having, having, you know, your work out there for people to discover and be able to check out um, is huge for your, for your growth and to just network and, and be able to find work and also be able to find new people to collaborate with. That's great. And we mentioned that with some of the kids in this class too, because some of them are very interested in what, this kind of work, but also yeah. just the practice anyways with anything you're doing. And I saw them like, you know, here's a DS kid, I'm going to talk to you today. But I said, it's also a good way to kind of start to learn the network because yeah. what I've noticed from being in the school system for 20 years is that um, it's a good place for you to start your network. It and is. People, and people will be like, you know, oh, you know, I was in class of like, you know, 2011. And you see their work and like, oh, hey, I'm in there now. They love to hear from you. They love Absolutely. to kind of like reach out. And I think it's sometimes the fear factor that you're going to be bothering someone or, you know, you don't know um, what's going to happen. But probably 90% of the time, they love to hear from someone. Yeah. Especially, like, huh? especially with like a hometown connection, you know. Um, not to say you shouldn't reach out to people that you don't know at all, but I think in particular, you know, let's say that you, you go to college and you graduate and you maybe want to go into the film business or into, you know, digital advertising, whatever it may be, you know, you can go on and, you know, find people from the Dover Sherburne, you know, DS alumni and reach out to them. You know, I've, I actually hooked up a dude who went, um, to DS and he got a job, you know, a few years later, just, I did, you know, it was just, I connected him with somebody. I was sort of like the, you know, the middle man between the yeah. two he ended up getting the job. And so mm -hmm. I think that Dover Sherburn is, you know, there's a lot of, it's a special place. I love, I love DS. And, um, you know, I think that there's, I love that Darren Buck, or Buck has done like the DS homecoming. That yeah, I sure that. Oh, there we go. Um, you know, I think that Dover Sherburn, you know, does value the arts. And I think that that's, it's a great place to grow up. Um, Absolutely. Sort of on that. Yeah. yeah. And from a kid who, a kid, a guy who came in from, you know, Medfield and seeing how it worked there. And just these nice little towns, it kind of like works out really, really nice. Um, it's like, I keep a LinkedIn. I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm gonna be a DS forever. Like, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I have, you know, but I, it's like I tell the kids I'm like join in because there's like all kinds of people in there from years and years of, you know, going through my classes or liking something I did or just thought it was funny in the hallway, and they join in there and, you know, it's like you know go find your connection and find what you want to do. So uh, any questions, guys? I know it's we're kind of like talking along here about stuff. You guys all good? I'm gonna shoot my little switch here. I'm gonna they're all right. Okay. Um, yeah. Oop. Colin, did you raise your hand? Yeah. Oops, um, you probably get this one a lot, but who's the most famous person that you've met? 
that I've met. Um, we, so our, I've worked with Tom Brady. That was great. Love, love Tommy Boy, even though he's gone now. Um, Maggie Gyllenhaal is in my film. Um, we have some, you know, because of the sort of the ethos of our film being, you know, this, uh, you know, inclusive um, project that is really supposed to be, you know, uh, kind of opening more doors to people with disabilities. There's been, you know, a lot of interest in this type of project that hasn't really been made before. And so Ted Danson is another EP on the film, Jamie Lee Curtis, Brandon Boyd of Incubus, if you know them. Um, who else? Who else? Who? Oh, right. My, I, I directed a music video for Rick Ross, um, which was really fun. That was sort of outside my wheelhouse at the time. Um, that was fun. He was, yeah, as you would imagine, bigger, larger than life. Although he's kind of short, which I was surprised yeah, by. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, also, I mean, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough. My dad is a really interesting guy as well, and he's big in the peace movement. So met like Muhammad Ali and Mother Teresa and Maya Angelou. So even outside of the film world, uh, you know, I've met a lot of interesting people. That's, That's awesome. Cool. That's yeah. cool. great, great question. So you worked, for, you worked with Tom Brady on a um, local commercial, right? Yeah. Like yeah, it was, um, it was a commercial for Unreal Candy, which I think Whole Foods now. Yeah, I think they got a new in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It was like initially... Uh, I think CVS was like the first company to like, you know, they, they had like the exclusive to it. But um, yeah, for those who don't know, Unreal Candy is like this, basically it was the initiative to unjunk, take out like all of the high fructose corn syrup and all of the, you know, the crap that's in the five major candies, which I think is like M&M, Snickers, Reese's, whatever it was. And Tom Brady was like a brand ambassador of that. So we did this launch where, this is actually, this is an interesting, this is a good production story. So we had been hired to, to direct this video and Tom Brady, they're like, okay, Tom Brady will be, you know, the, the talent in it. We want it to be some sort of like, um, you know, like a, a live, how would I put it? Like they wanted it to be a stunt of some sort. And so there was one idea that we had that Tom Brady was going to be in Back Bay in a dunking booth full of high, high fructose corn syrup. People could like throw a football at it and dunk Brady. And then a doctor was like, under no circumstance, can you do that? If you put, I mean, to, to show how bad high fructose corn syrup is, it's bad for you internally. But I guess if you were to leave it on your skin, it would start to burn. And so we're like, we're not putting Tom Brady engulfed in that. In a tent. Um, and so we had to figure out ways to, you know, get creative. And so we came up with this kind of like our bottom of the barrel idea. You know, when, when you're in advertising, you're kind of throwing a lot of ideas at the wall, see what sticks. A lot of the best ones, you know, that your like heart is set on oftentimes will get thrown out. And the one that you're like, you know, you, you jot down quickly and don't even think it's a good idea. It gets picked and you have to run with that. Uh, that was the case with ours where we came up with the idea of doing a staring contest where people would Tom Brady would be in a booth with like a curtain in front of it and just pe everyday people like us and our parents would be going to CVS and someone would come up and say hey try this new candy it's called unreal uh unjunking all the candies we have a world famous starer here if you beat him you get free candy and so people just went and sat down and did it the curtain opens and it's Tom Brady well that what, what we didn't think about was living in the social media social media age of how quickly that would get on Twitter. And so after the first person sat down, suddenly people were just storming in. And you know, there was we we only lasted about a half an hour before we had to get Brady out of there. Um and but it, but it was fun. If you watch it, uh I actually had to put myself in the video and pretend because there everyone just knew it was him. So the entire jig was up. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so you know, you you have to get creative and figure out ways to you know act on the fly and and save a shoot. And Brady was actually great to work with. He was he's a horrible actor, but he was actually good kind of being himself in like lot you know live setting, which is cool. That's cool. That's our second Tom Brady story we've had since we've done these. Uh, we're two for two on these field trips. Dave Wedge wrote a book with him. Okay, we had him last uh, two weeks ago. That's pretty nice. pretty funny. Let's see if the third person we have on next another week has another story for us. Yeah, that's so that's really cool. 
Um, so what, what tips could you give our, our students here um, on their work? So as I said, we're doing mostly pre-production work. They're kind of writing out like uh, stories right now. They've kind of working on their, uh, the beginning of their story right now. What they're doing is a kind of like a treatment of a pilot. So you did like an act one, which is like the hook, like that one thing that kind of gets them kind of hooked into the story. Then it goes into like the origin of the characters. Then the conflict that will happen later on the story. Then a resolution that kind of builds up to a second episode that if they were doing it for real would be this, you know, second uh, episode in their Netflix show. So what, what, uh, what, uh, good practices or tips could you give these guys? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm in the process very early stages of writing my uh, second feature. And I think, you know, what's been challenging for me is that I, I really want to just kind of like jump right into writing. But really the most important thing is really structure um, and being able to, you know, outline exactly where it's going beat by beat and what I discovered was that I just started writing and I didn't really know where how to really jump to my second act um, and I'm actually part of this writers group that meets every week over zoom um, of a bunch of different you know writers and directors and we're all kind of sharing our work whatever stage we're at um, but I think it is really important to to before like getting into the part that was the most fun which is actually writing it is making sure that the story beats make sense and that you there's a way you know you understand how you're going to get from your first act to your second act to your third and you know making sure that the that there's like an interesting arc throughout each act um and i'm still learning a lot of that because you know in music videos and short and you know commercial that it, it's you're it's such a short time frame that you're working for that you don't have to think that much about i mean the arc is is really like you know a minimal one um and so for for screenwriting you know what was what was interesting for best summer ever is that we had to work around you know there are eight songs in it and so you know as musical go as musicals go you know our first song was sort of like the meet cute which is like where we first have an introduction to our you know our uh, protagonists guy and girl they meet at a summer camp and we basically had these eight songs that we had to kind of write. We knew where they would, you know, we knew what kind of order they would be in because the songs like musicals, they all have, you know, a narrative uh, structure to them. You're learning information about the characters through the songs. And so we really had to build out, it was a fun exercise in building out, okay, well, here's the, the first song opens the movie. And then how do we get from the first song to the second song? And what's the dialogue? What do we learn between that? Um, and so writing a musical, you know, now the second film that I'm writing is not going to be a musical. And so it's sort of relearning how to, how to write each story beat in a way that you don't really have like a save, which is a musical number, you know, where you're basically able to like, you know, have a reprieve from, you know, it's just fun for like, you know, two or three minutes. And it also can move the story along in a way that like a normal narrative can't. Um, but what's the, tell me about the idea you guys are, are working on. Is it individual or? Individual work, yeah. Individual. So they're, they're, it's all, it's all, it's all individual. Hold on a second. It's all, uh, all individual work. Um, so. Uh, it's well, this is, I, this is a good, you know, starting point. Um, I read this book called <laughs> Save the Cat that my girlfriend gave me. And it really is a great way. It's a great read because it's very, um, it's short and concise but it really gives you like the tools to like, okay, this is how you're gonna approach, you know, the first thing you should do is have a log line so that if you were to, you know, you're trying to sell this, well, in two sentences, tell me what it is and what's the story about. So creating your log line first is really important. And I would really recommend reading that book. I wish I had read it 10 years ago, um, Save the Cat. And from there, it's like, okay, it's, it's figuring out, well, what kind of story is it? You know, it basically based on all these other films, like, you know, where does it, is it a romantic comedy? Is it a thriller? It's really like establishing, um, you know, exactly what genre it fits into. Um, and then being able to develop, you know, who are your characters? What is their, you know, what's the crisis that um, they're trying to solve? Um, is, you know, is it through an adventure or is it, you know, there's a lot of different of ways to approach it but that was really important for me and I'm still kind of figuring out exactly you know how my film you know the mechanics of the of the script will work but that's really I think before you can really get into the screenwriting of it, itself 
is understanding where your story is going, just in little bullet points. Um, but I mean, we, maybe I'd be interested to know what, what your, you know, maybe in like a sentence, you guys could tell me what your, what your story is. If yeah. you're up for that. Of course. They have all written log lines. I don't know if they have them in front of them, but the first thing we did was we, we uh, wrote a log line and they came up with characters and now they've uh, written um, kind of their hook, which would be like the first like two or three minutes before like a credit scene. Sure. And now they're, uh, this week they're working on um, kind of like the origin of their characters and where they're going to go right. before they get to that. Act three, which is where we're going to have that conflict. Yeah. So That's they're great. so they're kind of working on. Yeah, yeah. So they they um, they might be shy, but they've doing yeah, some, they don't they're, have, they don't. Some, but they're doing some amazing work. Just to, I'm, I'm so proud of them that yeah the work that they're doing because um, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy yeah, for yeah. them to kind of these kids keep showing up and listening to me once a week. <laughs> you know, from my living room or whatever room I'm, I'm in, and uh, yeah. it's been uh, you know a testament to that. You guys are inspiring and um, you know, I think I know how challenging it is right now, but to be able to kind of keep the wheels, you know, grease and keep trying to, to write and, and, you know, have creative outlets is really important right now. Um, even if it's, you know, in solitude, which is hard, but keeping a community together and uh, you know, collaborating, I think is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely. Keep that going. Excellent. All right, uh, anyone have any questions before we? Okay, yes, Grace, see your hand up. Go right ahead. Um, like, who is your favorite director in like filmmaking? Um, like movies. Like, who's your favorite director to watch? And yeah, that's a good question. Um, favorite, probably Tarantino. I really, I love his film a lot. Um, I don't know if you know Derek in France. He's a, he's a director, he bl directed Blue Valentine and Plays Beyond the Pines, I really love a lot. I love Ryan Gosling, he's a major man crush on him. Uh, he's a fantastic actor. And um, those are probably two that I, that I really love their work the most right now. Um, I think there's been some, especially music videos that I've sort of, when I go on a shot deck and I'm sort of creating you know, these mood boards, I tend to find that I'm going back to their work quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I love them. What about you, Grace? Who do you, who filmmakers do you like? Um, I like John Ford a lot. He's mm -hmm. one of my favorites, as well as Spielberg, because yeah. I watch a lot of his films. But I recently um, watched a lot of Douglas Stark's films, like Written yeah. in the Wind. Um, so I'm like just watching a ton of films. Yeah, this is a great time to just pour into movies and, and watch a lot of the greats. And I just watched Stand By Me for the first time in a long time the other day. It was a fantastic movie. Um, and what else did we, we just watched, what did we, oh, she has headphones, on. Uh, we watched, what it's, um, what is it called? It's um, Jong Un's uh, Netflix film, director of Parasite, what is it called? It's like these- Snowpiercer? Not Snowpiercer, Okja. Have you seen Okja? Okja is fantastic. It's on Netflix. It's, it's a real, it's, um, I re really recommend that. That's a beautiful film. It's sort of like a social commentary on like animal cruelty, but it, it's basically like the, um, it's set in the future and they basically create these super pigs. They're, it's animated, so that pigs are animated, basically to, you know, make like the perfect pig to, that can be like, uh, you know, eaten. It's like, has like, I don't know. You should watch it. It's a fantastic movie. Um, Sorry, let me close this window real quick. It's very no, loud. No worries, no worries. Great question, guys. So we have probably about two minutes left. Anyone has a question? We'll go through that here. All right, everyone seems like they're they're good. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, it was right. just perfect. Very cool, very cool. All right, guys. I think we um I think we're good. What do you guys think? Any any uh, any other questions that we have? So uh, uh when will we be able to see your movie? I know unfortunately it wasn't able to open South by Southwest. Is it going to like? Yeah, we're still kind of figuring that out. We're kind of talking to sales agents and sorting out whether, you know, this number one goal is to get in front of as many people as possible. So we're, ho we're hoping by like the fall, to be able to kind of have it out there. But, you know, our hope is to be able to bring it on the road and be able to show it around the country, which we can't do right now. So we're kind of putting it on ice for a little while as we sort out the best, you know, wait for the world to heal a bit more and figure it out. Yeah, very cool, very cool. And uh, your, what's your new project? Can you tell us what your new project is going to be about? Or the, uh, Yeah, it's a, 
it's a it's totally the exact opposite of best summer ever it's a it's a drama that sort of centers around a um a grieving mother whose son has passed away and, and sort of like the uh working through like after two years past like being able to pack up his bedroom and it's sort of this adventure sort of fantastical of like how she copes with all of these belongings um so sort of an epic that i'm creating in my mind and yep. getting it done on paper is has been, yeah. has been fun yeah, yeah very cool so uh, i'll have you stick around for, for a few minutes so i can talk to you outside here but um anyone have any other questions how's everyone doing everyone's good all right guys thank you so much for showing up again as i said this is uh you know outside of our class time they, they kind of uh take their own time to come by and say uh, hello to us as we're kind of putting these things together so Thank you so much, everyone, for stopping by. Um, thank you Mike, for, 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 for doing it. Uh, your, his information's on my website. You can also contact me if you want to get a hold of him as well. Yeah, and feel free to reach out You know, at any time. I'd, I'd love to chat with you guys. So shoot me an email at, at, if you have any questions or just want to you know, chat. Happy to you know, give you advice and, and whatever I can help out, I'm more than willing to do. Awesome. Okay, guys, we'll see you. Soon, Mike, just hold on for one second. I'll yeah. talk to you outside and we'll. Yeah, yeah.